Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Now, it is back to school time in Arkansas, even Oklahoma. As students head back to class this week, things will look a bit different for those at two Fort Smith Elementary Schools. Baldwin Elementary School is combining with Fairview to start the school year. It's all because of construction delays at Baldwin. Fairview is just four minutes down the road from the campus, but this is impacting 245 students and 50 staff members who have to relocate. Administrators from both schools have been working overtime to make a plan and ensure that everything is in place for this week, first week. The Fairview principal says so far so good. However, district officials say it could be up to three months before Baldwin students return to their building. And school districts across the country are reporting bus driver shortages Still, that's been a major issue in our area post COVID and last year some local districts saw such a shortage of bus drivers they were forced to cut routes. However, this year we're hearing from local districts who say they're starting the school year strong. 5 News reporter Katherine Gilker brings us new information. Fayetteville Public Schools say they are in good shape at just three drivers short. The district currently runs 51 daily routes and have 48 drivers. We have other members of the transportation team who have their CDL who are able to drive to jump in in a pinch. But obviously we'd like to have them doing their other assigned jobs. And so we're always looking for new drivers and we're trying to recruit those so we could have the ideal situation would be to have a surplus. Fayetteville Public Schools spokesperson Alan Woolburn says they didn't see any issues with bus routes Monday morning, aside from those typical on the first day of school. There were people who maybe was this my route? Oh no, it's oh it was this route. Okay, getting straight. Make sure and, and make sure all the bus drivers know where the stops are. The kids know where the stops are, and this is what time that your bus comes through. Rogers Public Schools are in a similar situation with 70 routes and 75 full and part-time drivers. Assistant Superintendent Charles Lee says Rogers could also use a few more. When school starts on Wednesday, you know we have routes covered right now, but. Uh, it's a situation where you know the labor shortage hit all of the schools across America, not just in Arkansas and not just Northwest Arkansas, but across the nation. And schools were scrambling to try and find drivers. Lee says they've been fortunate to not have to cancel any routes. When the first day rolls around, he asks for parents' patience as the district makes adjustments as needed. We'll get the kids home. It may take us a little bit longer on those first three days. And what we see happening over those first two weeks is the they get them home a lot quicker once they're the the kids are, we're getting them on the right bus and uh, all the kids are settled on which bus they're going to be riding and the routes get settled. Well, with it being that time of year again for back to school, a few that have started Springdale, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Pea Ridge, just a few of the schools who actually started school yesterday on Monday. And today is the start of a new school year for many others. Kids in Salem Springs, Prairie Grove, Elkins, Lincoln, and Lavaca go back today. Then on Wednesday, Bentonville, Gravit, Rogers, Huntsville, Alma, and Van Buren students will head to class. All right, before we get to more news, let's get a check of that weather with meteorologist Bella Grace and Bella is shaping up to be a pretty nice week. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. It's really clear today, especially for the next couple days. We're going to be feeling a lot cooler than we have been. We have a north wind that's pushing in, pushing a lot of cool air our way, and we're going to enjoy it. Right now, we're creeping in northwest Arkansas towards 70 by 10 a.m., warming about 80 as a high. We'll get to that in just a second. The River Valley is warming a little bit faster at 75 at 10, warming 4 p.m. We'll be at 85. Lots of sunshine in the forecast today. We have a few breezy uh, winds, gusts that are going to come a bit later today. But for now, our highs are looking pretty low. I mean, we have 77s across the board, Rogers Eagle, War Eagle, 80 in Fayetteville. That's about the highest that we're seeing today. It is just going to be a cool day. We have lots of sunshine. That's not going to help us warm up too much, but it is going to be a beautiful day to be outside. 82 in Greenwood and Poto, 85 in Fort Smith as a high. That's a huge drop from what we have been seeing. We can see that north wind right here pushing. We're going to have a few wind gusts up to about 20 miles an hour in Fayetteville, about 17, 18 in the River Valley. It's going to be pretty breezy around 2, 3 p.m. today, and then it'll clear out into the early evening. We are going to be dropping into the 50s again tonight, 60s in the River Valley. It's going to be a cool one for the rest of 
today and tomorrow. We're going to start warming up later into the week. The River Valley is seeing lower humidity and northwest Arkansas is seeing that as well. We are seeing just so much sun in the forecast and that's so exciting. I know that's a great start to this week and it's going to end beautifully. All right. Thanks so much, Bella. Well, Razorback Nation is mourning the loss of another legend. The University of Arkansas and sheriff's deputies in Florida have confirmed that former running back Alex Collins has died. Collins played for the Hogs from 2013 to 2015 and later played for the Seattle Seahawks and Baltimore Ravens in the NFL. According to the Broward County Sheriff's Office, Collins died in a motorcycle crash in Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. The crash report says Collins was driving a motorcycle when an SUV made a left turn in front of him. He crashed into the rear passenger side of it and died at the scene. This marks the second tragedy to hit the Razorbacks athletic program in two months after former quarterback Ryan Mallett died back in June. Well, thank you for joining us here for some of the top stories where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Make sure to catch up with us again tomorrow right here for more. Have a great day.